video production, whatever. Yeah. All a whole host of stuff. And this basically is say, hey, how can we create all that, make it a platform internal to the company so that our agents don't necessarily have to pay that kind of money monthly to, to utilize these things. <clears throat> the second point, traditional real estate technology isn't optimized for conversion because it's limited in how it uncovers potential clients in different stages of the real estate journey. It generates static data that leaves you guessing who to contact and when. It's way less efficient. Command identifies and prioritizes who you contact in your database and when, so you're never out of touch and always top of mind. It allows you to better master follow-up and convert at a higher level. And this, this middle piece right here is when we would start telling you that this is when the, the artificial intelligence component of our technology is becoming more relevant. Right, <clears throat> with all the other traditional types of technology, like like I just read, it just gives you data. Right, here's just factual data. Whereas what our system is working toward is synthesizing that data, cross-referencing it, and letting you know, hey, Michelle, FYI, Bruce who's in your database. We think he's likely gonna uh, have a real estate need within the next three.
and that can be used to be able to see how many great revenue. So I choose every evening to just try to not look at every achievement that comes from there. But here's the deal. You can turn your group to the office and you see stuff like that. Starting to automatically support a video. Like, what are they doing on Twitter? So you're going to see more and more of that as YouTube. Uh, but just know that over time that's what's going to happen. <clears throat> For example, we, we logged the appointment in here, and we've got our one active, uh, we've got an active listing, an active buyer in the system that we're you know playing with and you know, kind of seeing how it goes throughout this process. Then as we do this, we're going to track down here our opportunity ratio, see kind of what are our deals we have going on. As it moves from one stage of the transaction to the other, we're going to see exactly how many do I have in the appointment categories, how many are active, how many contract flows, et cetera. The cool thing about it is, what I like right now, Kelly, as I see the annual generate work for me, it'll start doing it for me on its own. So it's calculated. What's my gross commission income? Oh, what's my profitable income and what's my potential? Yeah, good deal. Bruce, best case scenario, your potential income is this. Based on the metrics that you have about your business and appointments and what actually closes, I think this is very positive, right? Because if this, if this was accurate, it would show up all of the deals we had going on. You have to be somewhere from 10 to 12 deals. It would say, here's your profit and potential based on what we gained one night call up. So the actual uh, probability of like this compared to this. How am I doing the, the goal that I have on the This has it broken down between what the buy side and the sell side has. Sell script uh, by team and by first and last position. Again, this is the This is what's being tracked. Turning in, starting to see the kind of a buy side that we have going on. What questions? And you, so you're you're listing. So you could do a list of properties in that listing page, where you might have to do some manual manipulation, right? Because as an office, we know when you're getting listed after 11:30. We don't necessarily know when you're going to the buyer and when they're going to contract and stuff. It's going to trigger it when you get around to listing. Not when you get around to listing. Some people are, are more diligent about that than others. Which is why it's kind of uh, that's kind of what we need to build on. Now moving forward, what will happen? Is when you put it in there, submit it for review, it will stop any potential that will come before when you do the green page. We're actually reviewing the point where we're looking at. I don't know if that's right. Great question. That's what we're trying to do. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to create an opportunity? Yes. And it won't let me, I can put Rochester Market Center. Okay, so I'm going to have you push the pause button on that page. I'm not going to go down that page. Okay. Okay. Settings and changes that the buyer 
Understand opportunities. Make it opportunities is synonymous with the pipeline. Right? You're tracking the pipeline, potential CPI, all that. <clears throat> okay, smart plan. Go back to the dashboard. Yep, yep. And as you scroll down, it showed you that we've got other stuff coming to Coming to calendar and budget. Smart plan. Automate your business to create digital leverage. Save time and money by simplifying and automating the back, background tasks that take you away from doing what you do best. Those are time savings. Smart plan can allow you to create and deploy customized workflows to take action to support your smart business. This ensures you spend less time working in your business and more time. Coming to the future, and uh, then I get my uh, are you ready to create smart digital leverage? Plan and remove the action plan, smart plan, smart plan, and have the department of smart plan. Public and this workflow.
you look at your dashboard, it's an officer that is not a So my phone is task manager. I've got the ability to start creating tasks for anything that you might want, whether it's a transaction or message or whatever, come in, create it, up to communicating with my colleagues. Give it a due date. Let's say uh, I'm giving myself a call at 12 o'clock today at working on cruise to Attach any relevant files that I want to. I'm going to have to. I can assign it to a contact already in my database. So like Bruce is already in my database. I can assign it to him. So now I've got it in the task force that I plan. So if I wanted to come in and I want to get details and I want to start invoking the task force capability on all the tasks I'm doing, whatever, I can come in here, uh, start laying them out. Are you at a place where you have the ability, but I don't? Because I have something pulled on my Android app. This right here? Yeah, you're on Spark Plan. Yep, the Spark Plan.
be exactly the same as the issue of the time. Associated with the suffering. Just got another alert. Now I'm actually going to test it. Here's my new one. Hopefully, it's starting to work. Did you jump to your oh. review? I was under, I, I logged in with the party and tried to spell our new try out. Yeah, I'm going to go Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So I had a little bit of a different view, and I'm going to go back and I'll show you how I got this. So right now, I'm in myself uh, in contact. Associated with the contact. Follow me so far. Listings, you want to kind of manage and track the uh, assets and things. That's one that's still coming soon, but again, it's going to be uh, the ability to kind of manage that entire process. Digital uh, and hard copy and interactive listing content, where part of it's going to be you can send kind of paper copy of the listing envelope to students, have them read things, and use that to kind of help you develop your position listing content. 
We're going to move to email campaigns. Click here. You can create, you can create a campaign within here. It's also going to ask you for some kind of sub colored outline. So it's going to be social media. You have a list of these things. So I got created a little list. Choose a list that you have in there. Choose your one that you market your email campaign. Just hit the home button. Then you would select the campaign. Yeah. Mailchimp is one of them. So just to take a look at what it is. If you don't have a Mailchimp account, you can create one. Then as you're in command, I'm going to log into the settings portion, connect the prompt, set up with your account. And it's going to utilize that to help you with email marketing. Added feature for that is you see a lot more visibility on tracking of your email marketing. So my team, we already use Mailchimp. Our newsletter because it's a small community. So once we send out a newsletter, we can see how many people opened it, how many people got to the problem to, uh, who opened it for a specific time or you know, who opened it predictably. We can follow those people and uh, measure the effectiveness of that. But that's why you have to ask create a mailbox. The reason why in the settings it's asking you for a thumbnail or calendar or maybe even a photo you can do the same for Facebook or any of these other social media announcements. You want to do it that way. Now let's go into the uh, checkout. This is my dad. I'm a dashboard. Something that's in check. In here, you've got these Zillow listings. You can kind of use this design feature and software to create. Knowing that most stuff is probably going to get opened by now. Check the quantity. So when you're designing this, you might be fearful like, well, gee, I should do one now, but I don't you know, know the exact date or everything I want, and by the time it gets there, it won't be open. So you can do this as a design for yourself. So let's pretend that we have this fully designed. Three pictures this picture, this picture, this picture. If this is on the desktop, where are you going to put your most important picture? Right in the middle, right? Or watch this. If somebody opens up on the smartphone, where would you want to put that picture? If you notice, the desktop took this picture, and on the mobile device, it made that one public. So it's important for you to understand, based on what type of uh, device you're using, how do you want to tailor your marketing? Okay, well, great. In the desktop mode, I would put the picture, but now most people are going to be using mobile. I'm going to put my best one there versus looking at it from a mobile view. If it had been swiped this way, it would have been better. This is 
the default market for the product. Here's another example where we're going to create a market for the product. Also, how you make a lot of money. This is definitely one of those things where you're going to have to do some research to see how it works. The good news is, once I go first. So let's say we're going to create this. So I'm going to create this one. I'm going to ask you, what are we looking for? Are we looking for web marketing material? Are we looking for email design? Are we looking to do a little bit of social media? Let's do a little bit of social media. Great. We're going to do that. Great. Check. So it's taking me in here. And now at this point, what I would do is I would scroll out to the name that I want to do. Really, it always goes there. I'm, I'm in here right now. I'm doing a trade for this. If I do preview landing page, I can't show you what I'm going to get. You kind of see what I'm doing. But it will take, like, I'm trying to get you guys to not just. What we, what we owe you, we have to get figured out. Right now, we're kind of covering both of them. We've got child and family members. We've got some family members. Yeah, we've got some Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> I like driving there. Um, so once I got there, I told the car and I was like, but I guess it's this is the email address. The landing page is going to email again. Kind of breaking it down by name and basis. So you can see that people are actually sending this to you all. I'm just going to. Here we go. Quick question. You know, well, my name is going to be that for a friend. So let me get that phone number. It's Amy Page, but I'm using Page and Amy. So right here, Amy Page, executive director of the Amy Page. So you get one option. No, I believe I used to be a Nintendo class. I might be talking about it. I literally signed up for all of them. They did in so order to create a landing page. So that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you come into sketch shops, you don't see anything like that. So. But and, and it could go back. One of the things to look at, you've got, you've got my sketch over here. You've got, you guys have the CMD sketch library option? Yeah. Yeah, so the thing you've got one is the thing you can click on. Well, not you, this stuff is up to you, but that's what I'm doing. All I'm doing is dragging and dropping through this whole uh, stuff that I've already formulated. No, by the way, it's Under Sketch House, you have to use Sketch Library. So, what's going to be ideally what's going to happen? Take that listing page, it's put in the MLS, and it gets put in the yellow. So the entity is able to put the MLS number and enter it, and pull, automatically pull all the properties into the sketch book for you. So then you do a minor tweak there, right, versus trying to go in manually and put all that in there. That's what I think. So I created 
and I pulled up and went to my crystal. And I pulled up I really did. And I was going to open the pictures, and they brought up all the pictures. Here's where I'm going to manage the portal. Here's going to show Facebook and other other places that I'm targeting. I'm going to open up some of the places as well. Here's where I can make links and tweet in the actual image. Line for it. Here's where I can post some of the graphs that show the targeting. Or I can use some. 
Budget, marketing, images, and you can come in, look at your phone, see how it's doing, launch your budget, see the things that are helping you. You have to have the key to your Facebook profile and business page in order to do that. Here's where you have all your pin information. Archive campaigns, campaign ask post scheduling. So I might come up here and say, <clears throat> okay, I've got all I've got this listing that goes live Friday, but I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna create a campaign now and then schedule it to go live. Maybe because it didn't include all the information. I'd like to advertise my campaign to you. So that's um you're just not realizing this. So why would you sue them for that? Well, I mean, I'm not looking to sue them. Violate the law. Sure, it's like hey man, if I want to I don't know what it is. Okay. Let's look at when we should be spending most of our time on our own time. Not plus points. Time. Welcome to two different categories. We had two different ways. Grid. List. Here's your quick work. Contact. My database, right? I can add a contact manually. I can control how many I'm viewing at any given time. Filter my contact. I can save the list. I can tag things like any actual lead source, Google Contacts, Things.com, search engines, all of them. I can probably still add owner source, but not forever. Or are they my lead? This? I think we're. You could add a contact and tell it. And then it would go in your list. No, this is saying, this is saying neighborhood. I think this means that I've got my name associated with my neighborhood. So now show me that. Contact me. You find me in the terms and conditions of this. Let me do it again. I'll get you back in. So I've got contact. Now, here's something cool you can do with your profile manager. View map. Here is where I was talking about where in Minnesota, I think, when you zoom out, you see all the listings. Can you do it? Number one, that's your list. 
I'm not, I'm not telling these kids anything. I'm telling these kids to tell them the same thing. I'm telling them the story. 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 I'm telling them the You'll be able to track that human behavior. All the traffic you can gather in the city, which, by the way, is going to lead to the customer marketing campaign. If I moved it. This is their house. So if you click on that, it has their so for everybody in your database has their location in a particular location. Because you have access to look at the look at them, look at what they're selling on the not the good one, you can Because what, what what makes this system so dangerous and so incredibly powerful for you is the fact that when we're, when we're doing our transactions, we are typically we're most focused on what most dialed into is the first contact, then closing. Right? After that, we have some of us in states, we have some kids, but there's this whole after closing time period that can just be years. And maybe collecting additional inventory and things like that. Right? If we can set it up that through multiple times throughout this time period, we're actually getting a hyper relevant information regarding their home, their neighborhood, their current then all of a sudden, over this five to ten year stretch, they've been getting food by you, not in an annoying way, not in a way that you test around it, but kindly relevant so you can use their information. So when it comes time for them to actually do something, dude, it's five years later. They're they're still using your app. They're still using the emails and the landing pages you're sending. They're collecting their new data every single day, three, four, seven, ten years down the road, and it's enormous. Because they've been using this stuff for years because you were smart enough to set them up on that relevant market. That that in and of itself, that one feature. And oh, by the way, I think what you're going to find too is it's going to start encouraging behavior. If I know, you know, if somebody tells me, yeah, here's a deal where first time home buyers are going to buy this house and they're going to have this deal for you know, five, seven years from now, what a, what a kind of reality that is. But uh, I'm going to close this deal. I'm going to set them up to receive these kind of returns. Probably be what they and they might be looking five to seven years down the road that they can come up with information that you gave them. Maybe they might actually be able to grab their own information this way. Right? It's going to help make, make that decision even easier. Dave, the overview of everything that we're going to be able to do eventually. Right now, 
now we can teach on that. So will we have a class on Baba Deepa on that? Your master database, you upload it to command, and then and then you, you're just doing onesies and twosies in the command. And oh, by the way, when you're creating contacts and dot rules for contracts and stuff, it's going to be created in your database. You can come look at some stuff. Watching Katie had a huge technical error. She just <laughs> the she paused. It's just okay. And then you tell me this. Okay. Um, under uh, the source. Oh, the source. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have a contact in here. Yeah. It doesn't give me that many places. For lead source? Yeah. Can you create one? Yeah, show up and got another. So go back to your you can add custom fields under one. Mm. Yeah, so the answer to your question is the answer to your question is yes, it is customizable. This obviously Yeah. Yeah. Miss dial phone number. Because that's pretty Oh, wow. So, so we don't know how to do that. Not right now. When I'm in, the, when I'm in my contacts, uh, when I'm doing my contact, there's a few other things I can do. I can look at timeline. I can also look at opportunities. And this is showing you, for these particular folks, I've got two opportunities. I've got the ability to, to help them buy a home and to list their properties. For example, we've already got the word contract. They're, they're scheduled to close on their purchase, and now we're going to list their home. So this is what's feeding. Remember when I showed you opportunities earlier, it was feeding my, my GCI, my potential, my probable. That's where all this is seeking and showing you all this information. And then if I had specific tasks in here as well, I would have those up. Any notes I want to have about that specific thing there? And I am uh, bothered by the fact that I can't give like, more accurate information regarding the source of My guess, Lori, actually, what, what, what I probably need to do, I probably need to go into settings and then add the different sources so that when I'm here when I drop that I can select a little bit. Let's get it. So my advice to you would be especially if you're gonna to come to the next training, get a few people added into the contacts and have this play around with it and then when we're in here we'll go into more detail on contacts. We're all kind of familiar with the referral database already, right? 
You guys have been getting uh, requests to join your network on your phone. You've been sending requests, all that fun stuff. And what I like about this is it's a quick snapshot of uh, who, you're, who you're inviting to your network, your responses that you've gotten, any inbound referrals that have come in, the outbound referrals, how you're working on it, here is your network. Uh, some people are they even give themselves tags, which is a brilliant up here to, to, to uh, send referrals. Yes, probably everybody in here is in the Um, but this is a, this is an important thing. I'm not gonna belabor this because you guys are kind of already familiar with this. But if you're sending referrals or going to networks, you can come in here, uh, go to the map, and see who's services they've been giving us. Uh, another thing you can do. Um, It's finding all kinds of agents. Can you zoom in? Yeah, I'm so here, in, but I don't see any people. Okay, I just changed it to market centers, so that's showing me the market center, market center, market center, 271 agents. I can go through. Here's the other thing, it's showing me their production. Right? And so I can say, okay, wow, that's 141 units. That's awesome. But she's probably in the machine. I want something more in um, our scenes range that they in. Right? Also filter it by connecting connect with anybody in this area. This is for all my Minnesota people. Production. That's what's showing out of the deal. Why might this be relevant? You want to send somebody, say you have somebody that you know that's moving to Pennsylvania, you can key in there, you can contact them, you can send, you know, that you have an interested person that's moving that direction, you can send it to 10 of them. And see who wants to fight. They can send an email back to you saying, "Yeah, I would love to work with this person," and then you can connect with them or interview who you want to, and send them a referral. So you're right. And this is why this is an important production thing. So you can see as I'm as I'm zooming in closer and closer. Like let's say somebody says they're very, they want to know they they're really interested in this specific area. Well, I can zoom in. I can actually find agents that have done deals in that area. That's how I can build people. Then I can broadcast the referral. You guys remember what that means? So here's y'all. I'm busy. I gotta leave this area. There's seven agents there. I don't know any of them. I'm not gonna call all seven of them. So what I can do is I can just broadcast the referral. It notifies all of them. Hey, there's a referral opportunity. Do you want to get <coughs> They click yes, and they have the ability to connect with you and accept it. It's kind of a first come, first serve. Like I've already, I've, I've seen this being used already. It's neat because you can put, like, say you want you want somebody to accept it within the next five hours or four hours. Right. You can put that right, right. on the third line down. You right. can tell them. And or you can counter back. Like, say they have this down at 20. You can counter back and say, oh, it's okay. Four or five. They don't get the name or anything until you decide who you want. 
where I plugged in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it didn't find under market. Did you click on the market center? They all moved over to Chandler. I'm in Lebanon. Okay, so if I'm in the back of my dashboard. In command, click on groups. What you notice is I'm actually technically shifting from command to you. And here are different groups that I belong to the Bernsel office, command, labs, North Central, which is our region, the Rochester office, uh, I have a team group. And this is going to essentially kind of become like a news feed, uh, news feed kind of like we have in, your, uh, in Facebook right now. We can create new groups, we can join groups. I go to the dashboard within Connect. This is what it looks like. This looks a lot like what? They're basically creating a company internal Facebook that we can communicate and interact with agents all across the country and interact with training and other opportunities as well. A good place to go to if you're trying to figure stuff out and surface it. Okay, who's, who's using this? How are they using it? What issues are we having? How do we this? If you want to join labs, you can go into labs. That group, see what the posts are, what they're sharing, and all on Facebook. Then, of course, there's the chat feed. So, when you post an idea to our feedback form, others will be able to subscribe to it, make comments, or hey, I'm running into this issue, or, can we do this, or can I a suggestion on how I think we thought of it? Submit it, it goes through them. So this is going to be an important place to come to when you first log in. Come in, tweak all your settings, get your calendar, your email, your social media stuff synced up with it. Those are all your applications. These are contacts that have been deleted or archived. Where did you go to sign in? So if I'm on my dashboard, yeah. and I click on settings right here, opportunity settings, oh, yeah. you click a template, custom oh, yeah. fields, yeah. you can create custom fields in here, same with tags. This will show you, Michelle. This will show you a log of all your imports that you've done. This shows on February 14th, we imported three on the Marketing profile. Upload your photo. This would be an important one. Um, so, for all your marketing materials, and it's going to pre populate for you. Go into settings, marketing profile, put your name. Phone number, all the pictures you want to be pre populated for all your marketing templates, phone number, etc. All that fun stuff. Facebook, everything. This is going to be, that will be the same a lot of work. <clears throat> so the caveat with most mm -hmm. of this, uh -huh. right? Well, a lot of it. <laughs> right, right now, you need to be focused on your database. That's why for baby steps, introduce start conceptualizing because for me it's it's, it's going to be easier for us when landing pages is actually fully operational for us to say okay now we're going to use landing pages and I'm like oh my god what is that and I'm like, okay no I know what that is I've seen it before understanding conceptually 
how we can start putting into practice specific rules. I don't know whether we don't know how to get to it, I don't know how to log in. Um, because if we just keep adding one block at a time, that's going to be a lot easier than trying to take 50 blocks and throw them all together. All the time. So we're just sitting here right now. This is my Do we have to leave for MailChimp, or is that going to be included? So MailChimp is a free service, so you just have to create an account for it. And then when you're using it for your email campaign, it's going to send it via MailChimp and it's going to track there are portions of MailChimp you can pay for, basic services for you. I tried to create MailChimp. I tried to log on to create an account. We tried to create an account with MailChimp. Yeah. Well, it directed me to do it. Okay. And I can't remember where I was that it directed me, but I tried. And it wouldn't allow me to. I can't remember where I am. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing. Database and then reports. And this is going to be one of the most useful things to you. Uh, it's going to show you if you're, if you're putting, if you're tagging and categorizing your leads as they close, it'll, it'll track your sources. You can search for this year, this month, etc. It shows you total contacts, total buyer opportunities. This is where I'd be living and breathing within my business. How many contacts do I have? Um, what's my PCI that's going to be coming soon? And your opportunity reports, etc. So as I log into this, I should be able to take a look at um, kind of where my business is, where I should be focusing, and the things I'm doing in order to obtain it. This this shows my my closings per city, top ten cities. That would be kind of useful for me in your life. Last year. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. <laughs> what are the capabilities of the contacts? Uh, no, we got contacts. We got email campaigns, which we sync it with your. You know, you can sketch up, which is a bunch of marketing materials. You can do stuff that are already populated for you. You've got the tasks feature. You've got the opportunities feature. You've got, um, I think you can do, it's part of the good to see you, Darcy. Hey, Take care. Bye. You can start using some of the lead accelerator stuff as well. Can utilize the leverage of insights in specific areas. That's our great one. You've got your, uh, your real estate team here. So that's something you can use. I thought I had one in there. I don't know where it is. You know what? There used to be like four of them. I mean, the Mayo's had one. Mm -hmm. oh. you refresh? Um, this is stuff that's accessible. By agents, and what's, what's cool about opportunities like most people are going to just seems like busy work right now, it's not really relevant. But when consumers start using our app a lot, they'll be able to see the insights. And they'll be able to add insights themselves. <laughs> so that'll be something. I have four that come up. Are they all you? No, Nikki put partner's title in, oh, and then cool. Kelly and Byron, and Kelly and some of the golf people. Okay, cool. I have two. Some of the. Yeah, here's a couple more. Let me put. Nelly Dendrew with somebody's ice cream. Walgreens. Yeah. How do you know who this is? He didn't get somewhere. Mm -hmm. I bet he's a commercial guy that reps Walgreens. Well, I'll tell you what I did like. Uh, I put this right here. It says insights. That's not your hot I'm just teasing. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. It says local. It says local insights. And and you have the referral network available to you. Here. 
I know I could do that. One. You know those names you were calling earlier, Lauren? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the good news is, you know, as as this stuff shakes out and it becomes uh, completely available to us, you guys will have the building blocks are ready to start building the farm. I know that I get it, I understand it, and then I'll be here every step of the way as it gets more and more to start. Uh, personalizing it to you, putting it into action, getting it out. Um, so I know not 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 the sexiest class today, very base level, but hopefully you're walking away uh, kind of realizing things are at least there, what you can use, how you can start using it, and how you're going to be able to use it in the not Start getting your contacts into the database. That's the, that's the biggest thing. Who wants to shut the IDX link off the wall? Let's do it, John. That's what Gary said. Is Everybody know what I'm talking about? No. That's where they're they're getting all their information from us because there's some members in our associations that want Zillow to have that IDX link. With what Keller has put together on this platform, you can shut the IDX link off. We can do it all internally in the whole Keller organization, and you would hear the squealing for miles from some of these other our competition offices. That's kind of the goal. So now it's all in everybody's hands in the association. Shut it off. Stop the feed. They will not have it. Gary said that in his tech, but I can't remember which I it was like four hours that I watched him. Yeah, he said his goal is to basically put Zillow out of business. Right, we can put them out right now. I've told Zillow when they called me. I said, I've told, called the association and shut the idea off. And the phone went dead. <laughs> they knew exactly what I was talking about. That's I said, we got the inventory. If we don't, if we cut that link off, you guys won't have anything. You'll be the most embarrassed company in the world. The you people be, what about, what happened to this house? What happened to that house? They didn't make any money. So, they lost negative money. They bought 5,000 houses already. That's where they're going to make money. They're going to stop trying to. They bought 5,000 houses already in the United States. They're going to turn around and sell. They but they're not going to sell them as a real estate broker. They're going to sell them online in some fashion. Zach may know a lot more about this than I do. Oh, John, you nailed it. But they're, they're, they're changing their business model, right? Their business model has been to get money from who? Us. Chris Us. Lindahl. Yeah. After him, got. They Keep saw paying. his signs and they decided that guy's got it under control. Keep paying him, brother. Uh, but what I they do, they got about a billion in revenue. They got about a billion in revenue from that source, which was not enough to be profitable. And they're saying that through their high buyer program, such as they anticipate generating 20 billion. But do you think it's shut down? It's one thing to say that. Well, what just happened to them? They fired your CEO. Oh yeah. They brought in the original guy. Because things aren't going. Where's your stock Nowhere near where it has been in the past, right? Because the writing is on the wall. And if anybody knows anything about the industry and they're watching what we're doing, it's a huge deal, guys. Unless you start doing something different. The revenue's down, you're not profitable. You got companies like Keller Williams, the largest real estate company, going toe to toe with you. People that control the data, the writing's on the wall for you as a company and as a business, unless you change your problem. That's what John's saying. So when Zillow calls you and says, Yeah, we want you to pay us six hundred dollars a month and we'll send you a bunch of lead. Crap lead. And they just got done calling Kelly and Bruce and me, and everybody gave us the same offer and I'll give you that next year. Oh, okay. We'll give you hand pick. All you got to do is tell them, I voted to shut the IDX link off. If you want to make that rat file nervous, you tell enough people that, and they will be shaking in their boots. Am I right? You're right. But my preference would be when they call you, just say, hang on, let me see John Buckingham's number. <laughs> and I will be glad to communicate with them. We have a Zillow rep in our office. Here, we have to talk to you. <laughs> 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 that is Thank you, everybody.